It's not that I don't think that tight end rankings are valuable when it comes to fantasy football. It's really about the fact that I just believe with the tight end position in particular, we need to tell a much bigger story because with rankings, you don't get really the full story on every single player and how they got to league winning status in fantasy football. So I did a 10 year sample size where I was studying some of the top tight ends in each particular year since 2014 and I came away with some big big takeaways when we're trying to find league winning tight ends here now this data took me days to put together so please go down there drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to show your support and really what i wanted to show here was that i i first wanted to set the parameter of what a league winning tight end is so obviously a league winning tight end is going to have the number one thing i think that we can all agree on I'm not talking about getting guys like a Travis Kelsey who is being drafted in like the first three rounds, specifically over the past like five years. That's not exactly league winning when it comes to getting breaking value. Now, he was a league winning tight end, so I don't want to isolate him and say that he's not a league winner. The point of this is to show you guys that there are lots of tight ends in this list right here that I'm going to go through that were later round picks that you could get on a really good value that turned out being really good in fantasy football. And the other parameter here that I want to set right away is that I don't think you could be a league winning type of tight end unless you get into like top five status that was what I was initially thinking going into the fantasy going into this research right here so what I ended up finding out was that really the indicator here is when a tight end scores at least 160 points in a half PPR format that's when they're really league winning tight ends there's a lot of guys who typically fall underneath that like at 150 140 160 is really the parameter because there's only been six tight ends in any particular year since 2014 that have finished with 160 points so all the guys on the screen right here i went through every tight end that had over 160 points in the past 10 seasons in fantasy football obviously we're not going to go through all these guys there's a lot of names right here what i wanted to go through was the big takeaways that i had here so as you can see i studied everything from the year to the finish to the targets wide yards per Reception, total yards, touchdowns, total points, tight end finish the year prior, and the number of top five finishes. Here's the big takeaways here. So when it comes to age, this was obviously, I think, a major indicating factor in every other research video I've done, trying to identify league winners slash breakouts at the wide receiver position, the running back position. Age is, of course, a factor here when it comes to this, especially with tight ends here. Only Travis Kelsey and Antonio Gates Cross the age of 31 and at 160 points in a fantasy football season. In other words, Hall of Fame level talents were the only ones who crossed the age of 31 and did more than most other tight ends did at age 31. So those guys are outliers here. What's the other number? Number 30. How about guys who are 30 years old? Who crossed that? Greg Olson, Delaney Walker, Gary Barnage, and George Kittle. So... I would argue two Hall of Fame level talents, Kittle and Greg Olson, crossed the age of 30 and had 160 points in a fantasy season. Delaney Walker, I would say, not, he's not a Hall of Fame guy, but he was very good for a long time. Those of you who have been playing fantasy for the better part of two decades know exactly who Delaney Walker is. And then Gary Barn is literally like a lone outlier here. So, of course, there's always going to be outliers here. Gary Barnage is not the rule. The rule here is that typically your top tier tight ends who have already been producing up to that age of 30, those are the only guys who are going to break 30 and really be good in fantasy football. Now, the other takeaway I had here was that there was only six tight ends at the maximum that eclipsed 160 yards in any particular season. There was a maximum of six total tight ends per year. That crossed 160 yards. So you're not going to have tight end 7 getting 160 fantasy points. Tight end 8 getting 160 fantasy points. Again, that's what separates league winners from good tight ends. And as we know, tight ends are very unique. Tight ends are a lone, it's a onesie position in fantasy football. So you want to try to maximize the upside at that position, especially at cost here. Now the last takeaway I had here was that there was only one tight end who had less than 10 yards per reception in that big season. Very interesting takeaway here. And I think it can be explained, but 
I wanted to just note that because it's something I wasn't really expecting to find. Like, I, I kind of assumed there'd be a couple guys at, like, maybe nine to eight yards per reception. No, there was only one guy, and it was actually last year when Evan Ingram had 8.4 yards per reception. But he had 143 targets to go along with it. So he had a major, ma he was a target monster for the Jaguars last year. So those are the major takeaways that I had of these particular guys here. Now, as you can see, if you take a look over here at the tight end finish the year prior, most of these guys on this list, they were already top 12 tight ends the previous season in fantasy football. So that tells me two things. Number one, they did not go into the following season where they became 160 fantasy point guys they did not go into that offseason as values in drafts. They were not values in fantasy football drafts. They were already top 12 finishers, so their ADP was following accordingly. And conversely, the second thing it tells me is that the guys who didn't finish inside the top 12, those were typically guys that were cheaper later on values in drafts that, again, ended up as league-winning types of tight ends here. So the thing that I want to identify, I don't really care about looking at the guys who were top 12 tight ends. Because like I said, they're not gonna provide you massive values to be a league winning type of player. Again, you can have a league winning tight end with a Sam Laporta, a Travis Kelsey, but if you really wanna get a later round guy who provides this upside, they're available every single year. So those are the guys I'm trying to find. The guys who finished outside of the top 12, those are the guys I'm trying to find. So I put all those guys together, condense this list down, so you can see those guys on the screen right now. There's only a couple of names on here. There's not nearly as many names. It's only a total of 15 na six, 14 names, actually. So again, I'm not going to go through every one of these guys right here. We'll be sitting here for a while. What I want to show you is I, sh I studied basically the same things, right? Like the tight end finish. And the tight end finish that I'm studying is the year before they had the breakout season as 160 fantasy point guys at the tight end position. Studying the year before that to try to get some analysis here on what the buildup year was like for these guys. Also wanted to get the targets, the yards per reception, the total yards, all of that just coming from that particular season. Now again, let's just go through the major takeaways. The major takeaways I had here was that all of these guys had less than 100 targets. Now that, that's a more obvious one, right? Like. If they were 100 plus target guys, their ADP would have been higher heading into the next year and they would have finished probably as top 12 tight ends that particular season. So that's not really a surprise. It's not like that's some big revelation, right? Still a takeaway I wanted to address. Three of them had less than 10 yards per reception. So again, it, kind of, it correlates with the what we found originally, which is that typically if you're under 10 yards per reception, you're not going to be a big time scorer at the tight end position in fantasy football. And this was even a wider margin, right? I was looking for guys in the other list with 160 fantasy points. I'm just looking for top 12 guys. And these guys were not top 12 guys. The next thing I took away is that none of them eclipsed 650 yards. Now you can see on the screen, like there's plenty of guys who miss time here. Like Darren Waller, George Kittle, Rob Gronkowski, Jordan Reed, like a lot of guys on this list missed time in this particular season before they had that 160 fantasy point season. So we're not going to hold those guys to account here. Really, the main indicator was that, again, you can take the leap the second year after, after this type of season. You could take the leap if you're Gary Barnage at the tight end 59. If you're a guy like George Kittle, who is at the tight end 19, you could take that leap from 650 yards to like 900 to 1,000 yards within within a one span within one season. Very very possible. Only one of these guys was older than 27 years old the year before they had the big break. They had the big season. So as a general rule here, we're gonna try to look for guys who are not older than 27 and definitely not older than 31, which again, like I said, was the cap in that other list that was showing you guys. And the last takeaway I had, four of them had less than four targets per game on average because I wanted to be inclusive with the guys who missed time, right? The guys like Gronk, Tyler Eifert, Jordan Reed, Kittle and Waller, I wanted to include them in this list. So I just wanted to get a basic average here of targets per game. 
There was only four of them who averaged less than four targets per game. So that's a major indicating factor that we can look for heading into 2024 is the guys in 2023 who weren't top 12 tight ends, but they were averaging more than four targets per game or at least four targets per game. So all of that information led me to the group of guys that I'm about to show you guys. So I put, a, I put together a group of guys in 2024 fantasy football who fit this criteria for a potential 160 fantasy point season at the tight end position. Now the guys that I like the best, I'll get to that at the end. Let me just show you the guys that I have on this list right here. So you can see those names on the screen right now. Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts, Jake Ferguson, Dallas Goddard, Dalton Schultz, Johnny Smith, Hunter Henry, Tyler Conklin, Chickaconko, Davis Allen, and Luke Musgrave. Now, like I said, I am not in on all these guys. Like, I, I'm not out on any of them necessarily, but I like some better than others, and I dislike some more than I do with others. So the first thing I want to do address here is with guys like Mark Andrews and Kyle Pitts, they're going too high. They're going too high in underdog ADP right now, which is what I'm pulling ADP on here. They're going too high to be league winning values at the tight end position. So we're going to go ahead and take those guys out of the equation here. Now we're left with two left two less guys. And Jake Ferguson is very much on the edge for me. 86 ADP going at the tight end nine. Not super early, so I'm going to leave him here. And that's and, and for another reason, I'm going to leave him here, and I'll get to that in a minute here. Now, the majority of all these other, all these other guys, except Jake Ferguson on this list, they all have an ADP plus 100, right? All these guys are going after the first 100 picks in underdog drafts on average. So these guys are presenting major value if these guys, if any of them, actually hit this 160 yard season and they all could based on the research that we did now let's address the guys i like the most and the guys i dislike the most the guys i truly do have belief could be and actually have the best shot of being these breakout major value league winning tight ends here are Jake Ferguson and Luke Musgrave in particular. Now, again, that was one of the reasons I left Jake Ferguson on this list is because number one, he's not cheap, but he's not super expensive. He's not Kyle Pitts. He's not Mark Andrews. He's not Dalton Kincaid, which by the way, Kincaid and Trey McBride both fit this as far as the research we did, but they're both going too high. So it excludes them from being major values at the tight end position. Jake Ferguson is right there at that limit. I still consider him a value because I do believe that this guy could be a top five, top four tight end this year very, very easily. Jake Ferguson hits all the marks. He's below 25. He's below 27 years old. This guy's on a top, probably projected top 12 offense. Tight end one, Dak Prescott loves a good tight end. I love Jake Ferguson. I advise you to draft him an underdog today. And Luke Musgrave. Super value. Tight end 17, 150 ADP. What I also love about Luke Musgrave, top 10 offense projected with Green Bay and Jordan Love. Tons of options there, so I'm not saying that he's going to be some target hog, but the guy has plenty of upside based on what he showed last year, the aids that he's at in coming into his second season and on a top 10 offense projected in fantasy football for this 2024 season. Now, I also can get on board with three other guys here. The other guys I could get on board with are Dallas Goddard, Hunter Henry, and Davis Allen. Dallas Goddard is not as, I'm not as in on him. Goddard, the reason I'm not is because he's approaching 30. He's 29 years old right now as we speak. And Dallas Goddard has, he, he played a decent amount of last year and didn't look great. That being said, plenty of targets. The touchdowns weren't there for Dallas Goddard. He's also on a good offense as well. So those are the reasons I could get on board with a guy like Dallas Goddard. Hunter Henry, complete opposite situation. Same in the sense that, again, approaching 30, don't love that at all. What I do like with Hunter Henry is that with all these changes in New England, the second best tight end on that team is Austin Hooper. He's not relinquishing touches to any other tar to any other tight end. He will be the tight end one. And with a collection of new and young wide receivers, who's to say Hunter Henry isn't the preferred favorite 
out of that target target group in New England. Davis Allen, this one's more of a longer shot. Tyler Higby of the Los Angeles Rams tore his ACL in early 2024 during the fantasy, during the NFL playoffs. So that leaves Davis Allen and Colby Parkinson as the presumed tight end options here. Davis Allen's the younger player. He got more involved as time went on in 2020, 2023. So if I had to take a shot on one tight end out of that offense, which by the way, again, projected top 12. Davis Allen is the one I'm picking. Now, the guys that I distrust the most, I want to get those guys out of the way right now. I don't trust Dalton Schultz, Johnny Smith, or Chickaconquo. All these guys have to make the list because they fit the criteria, but with Dalton Schultz in particular, he's got more target competition and he's approaching the age of 30. Not good things that I'm looking for here. And by the way, tight end 13 price. Don't love that when I have so many questions. Johnny Smith, the problem is not the price. The problem is that he's older, almost 30, and he's on Miami, which is over the past several years, not shown an affinity for the tight end position with Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. And Chigaconqua. He's young and he's cheap. Tight end 24, 187 ADP. Don't have a problem with the price here. I do have a problem with the fact that he was one of the lone ones that had less than 10 yards per reception in 2023. I don't like chasing outliers unless I have really good reason to do it. And Tennessee has target competition as well. So those are the guys that I think you should stay away from. And Jake Ferguson and Luke Musgrave are the guys I have the most confidence in finding. And again, you would not get this in just normal tight end rankings from most fantasy football YouTubers. Most of them are going to give you a couple talking points on why they believe those are the guys that are going to be top 12. You need to go into depth to find a unique position at like tight end that is going to be a legitimate league winner for your fantasy football team. And those are the guys you should be targeting in a onesie position in fantasy football drafts. So let me know what you think of the research in the comments below and who your favorite tight end is out of this list right here.